express how great you are. What a mighty God we serve. Mighty God we serve. Angels bow before the mighty Welcome to Be The Ram Global Fellowship. I'm Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr. And on behalf of the whole BTR family, I want to wish you a happy Easter. It is Resurrection Sunday. And I am so excited that on one of the most celebrated days in the Christian faith, you chose to spend your time with us. I mean, really, this is a big deal to us. Because on one of the days that almost everybody that calls themselves a Christian goes to church and the, all the options that you could have had, that you could have gone to, that you could have fellowship with, you chose us. And that challenges me as a pastor to make sure I give you a quality service to make sure that God is seen, to make sure that God is felt and that his presence is here. Now I understand, I'm going to be transparent with you, I understand and I learned it a long time ago that Easter Sunday is a Sunday that a lot of people choose not to go to church. 
They choose not to because the church is filled with people who hadn't been there in over a year. They come on Christmas, they come on Easter, and they come back on Christmas, and they come back on Easter. Sometimes New Year's Eve too. And then they'll go to the club right afterwards. So those who are at home right now, and you're choosing to fellowship with us because you didn't want to go into a church building, I want to let you know that the church is not a building. The church is not a place. The church lives within us. We are the church. So I'm excited and I'm honored that you chose to come back to church. Maybe this is your first step towards getting back into a building. Maybe you'll never go into a building again. But while I have your attention right now, I want to thank you. I want to honor the decision you made today to take the next step and getting your relationship back right with Christ. This is Resurrection Sunday, and I think that we all have a resurrection that we have to go through. There are some dead areas of our life that needs God's breath in it again. There are some dreams, there are some visions, there are some goals. There are a lot of things that, that, that we gotta get it together. So I don't wanna belong it, but what I do want you to do, if you're that person and you know I'm talking to you and you know there's a few other people as well that yeah, I, I ain't doing it today. I ain't going in there. I'm not trying to put on for the Joneses. Send them this message. Put somebody in the game. Send them the link. Let them know, hey, I found a place that we can fellowship. We can get our word. We can stay in bed. We can get out of bed. Does it make you lazy? It just means that you chose to fellowship in this way. So send them the link. Send them a DM. Text them. Tell them. Talk to them. Let them know that Be The Ram Global Fellowship is live on this Resurrection Sunday. And we would invite you and we would like you to fellowship with us. Once again, I'm Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr. And this is Resurrection Sunday. Enjoy today's service. God bless you. He leads me to lie down in green pageant. He leads me beside the still whore. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right for his name's sake. Ye I walk through a valley shelter of death. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. For there are with for they are with me. They ride and they staff, they comfort me. They comfort me. And man, they prepare a table before me in the place of my enemies. Amen. In their place of my enemies. They anointed my head with oil. My cups running over. Surely, goodly in mercy. Surely, goodly in mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will de I would like to have our prayer. I would like you to join in with me. And remember at any time that you want to... Uh, have your prayer or have us pray for you, whether it be on air or offline. You can always go to our website, www.betheram.com. You'll see a prayer request on that website. Turn in, and I would love to uh, lift you up in prayer, and so would my entire BTR family. But let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord Jesus, you're mighty. This is the day that you have shown us that anything is possible. You defied the grave. You defied the tomb. You rose up. You know, God, your son came down from heaven to earth. And he lived a long, short life. I mean, long as in he did a lot of things. He's been effective. But it was short. 33 years. And on his last week, as he rode into town on that donkey, people threw out palm branches. And by Friday, they had him hanging on a cross. They crucified him. They, they laughed as he was beaten. They pointed fingers. You call yourself the king? You call yourself holy? You can't even save yourself. They laughed at him. 
and eventually they put him in a tomb that was borrowed. And while his body laid in that tomb, they slept. They relaxed. They felt like they had gotten you out of their hair. That, okay, we're good. We can move on with our life. It was just a spectacle. And now we can go on with, you know, living our day-to-day life. This traitor, this person, this this blasphemous uh, blasphemer is now gone. But on that third day, it went from laughter to relaxation to fear. Because your son rose again. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is what we celebrate today. Lord Jesus, I thank you for rising up. Because when you rose, you let me know that I can rise too. Lord Jesus, you let the person right now who's listening know that they can rise up. Whether it be the depression that they're coming out of, whether it be insecurity, adultery, fornication, malice, whatever the issue that they've been buried under, God, I ask that you would resurrect them in this moment. Lord Jesus, I speak with all power and authority that I call out those demons that have been troubling the families. I call out the demons that have been troubling our minds. Lord Jesus, you've been with us and we might not have been able to see you because we've been so focused on what's going around outside of the boat that we forgot who you were. We forgot the power that's within you. Lord Jesus, right now I ask that you would touch the bereaved family. Touch those who are having their first Easter without that family member. Give them peace. Give them healing. Give them understanding. Lord Jesus, be with them. Be with someone's finances. They trusted you with their tithes and their offering. They went above and beyond. And right now, I want you to resurrect their finances. I want you to pour out those blessings that you promised us. God, heal them. God, I spoke to a person who was homeless. I ask that you would touch them right now. I don't need to call their name, but you know exactly who I am talking about. Be with her right now as she's in North Carolina. I ask that you would provide a a, a way. I ask that you would go ahead and start building that table right in front of her enemies, those who stole from her, those who deceived her, those who thought that she would uh, do no good. She would never be back. God, I just ask that you would lift up to her, build that table, prepare that table in front of her, Prepare, prepare that table and let those enemies see her eat. God, right now, that father who's overbearing, that father who's not understanding, that father who's just trying to be manipulative, be with him right now. God, touch his mind, touch his heart, touch his soul, touch his thought process and his patterns. That mother who only wants to cause trouble. God, give them peace so that they can be peace, so that they can reciprocate peace in the environments that they're in. God, I ask that you would show love. That on this Resurrection Sunday, God, that someone will give their life to you as a result of being in this ministry, being in this moment. God, we love you. We invite you into this atmosphere. We ask that you would bless this service. We ask that you would just make it a service like no other. Let there be a divine connection through this screen. Whether they're on their phone, their iPads, the television, God, let there be a connection. Right now, I lift up the mothers. Whether they're struggling or whether they're doing great, lift them up. God, I pray for the fathers. I pray for the grandparents. I pray for the newlyweds. I pray for the newly divorced and the widowed. God, we love you. We appreciate you and we honor you. And we know that you're going to come through today. In your mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. the
of stories that have proved your faithfulness and I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend but there is beauty in what I can't understand Jesus it's you Jesus it's you and I believe you're the wonder working God, you're the wonder working God. All the miracles I've seen, you're too good to not believe. You're the wonder working God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see, you're too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good to not believe oh. And I can't resurrect a man with my own hands But just the mention of your name can raise the day So all the glory to the only one who See 
Welcome back. It's time for the meets. I hope that you've enjoyed today's service thus far, but I want to offer you the main course entree. The reason that we are here is because of the resurrection. It is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why we're Christians. That's why we're here. That's why we are celebrating. Because Jesus rose from the dead. Today, I'm going to speak to you for a few five minutes about the resurrection. The title of my message is Resurrection Day, a fight for our faith. A fight for our faith. Resurrection Day, a fight for our faith. And let me explain to you what I mean by a fight for our faith. Because some of you may say, well, why am I fighting for something that has already been won? The battle has been won. But your faith can go up and it can go down. 
I say it's a fight for our faith. And when I say that, that is twofold. Our faith individually. I believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that my bills will be paid. I believe that my needs will be met and my wants will be, uh, will be available. That's one faith that we are fighting for. Another faith that we're fighting for is the Christian faith in general. Right now, there are a lot of unbelievers. And I want to let you know that today's Easter, as Christians, we might be playing right into the hands of the enemy because we have so over-commercialized Easter. In reality, it's the resurrection day. We're celebrating the resurrection, not little bunnies hopping around, not uh, Easter baskets and candy and chocolates and knickknacks and all of that. We're celebrating the resurrection. Yes, I love the fact that we are having all those snacks and if you give me some chocolate, I'm going to eat it. That is great. And I think it's a way to honor Christ. But let's keep the main thing the main thing. Because we live in a world that we have all the, the knowledge or the information at the palm of our hands, but refuse to look it up, we go off somebody else's word. And there's so many people out there that just don't believe in God anymore. They got all different kind of religions. They got all different kind of faiths and they got all different kind of belief patterns. So when we go out and we make it about bunnies and little cute things and Easter egg hunting, we, we kind of play into their hands because they say, why am I serving a bunny? Why? But Because they're not going to take the time to understand what Resurrection Sunday is all about. So that's why I said it's a fight for our faith. Now I can get all deep and spiritual and say the Easter egg hunt is a, it's a, 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 a resemblance or a, a, a parallel to the way God has found this out and he did none of this and that and, uh, you know, and with the egg because life was in it. I ain't going to do all that. I'm just going to tell you what it is and what it's not. Sometimes we are our own enemy. But today, we're going to talk about fighting for our faith. And when I give you this example from the word, I'm coming from uh, John chapter 20, verse 24 through 29. It was someone else in the Bible that had an issue with faith. And that person was Thomas. They even named him Doubting Thomas. Aren't you glad that they don't name you by what you done, or else you would be uh, uh, fornicating John, or, or you'd be the stealing Fred, or, or you'd be the Turk something, uh, Alicia, or you may be the uh, the lying Fred, or, uh, or the deceiving Anthony. I'm so glad I could just be pastor coach, and not all those other things that I could be called. And I may be called on uh, different social media platforms by different individuals, but it's what God calls me that matters. It's what I answer to that matters. See, Doubting Thomas had an issue with his faith. And the Bible gives us clear instructions on what happened when he was struggling with his faith. So we can apply those same principles when we talk about the faith that needs to be resurrected. Our faith needs to be resurrected. Someone out there right now is having an issue with their faith. They used to believe. When they were younger, they believed. When they were married, they believed. Before their child passed away, they believed. They had the faith that would move a mountain. And when drama came, when trouble came, they lost their faith. They lost their belief because they can't see it. Just like Doubting Thomas. So the preface to this story is that uh, we all know on Good Friday, which it was good because it was good that I was afflicted. They hung our Savior from a cross. And then they pulled him down, they put him in a tomb. But in three days, he rose again. See, the tomb couldn't hold him back. The crucifixion couldn't hold him down. And the stone was rolled away. And because that stone was rolled away, he walked out. 
a new man with a new body. So he went to his disciples and he had a meeting with them. And they're like, wow, you look different, but I know my father when I see him. So now the disciples go on to tell Thomas about Jesus. They said, he's back. <laughs> he's back just like he said he would be back. But let me read verse 24 through 25. I'm going to read from the ERV so that you can understand just like me. Verse 24. Thomas, called Didymus, was one of the twelve, but he was not with the other followers when Jesus came. They told him, we saw the Lord. Thomas said, that's hard to believe. I will have to see the nail holes in his hands, put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side. Only then will I believe. That's the word of God for the people of God. Just like Thomas, many of us say, you know what? I used to believe, but now the only way I will believe is that I see him for myself, is that I can put my finger through the holes in his hand, is that I can touch his side. They don't want to believe because Someone told them that God is real. They don't want to believe like our generation because our grandparents told us what he had done for them. We're in a generation of people with doubting faith. And that doubting faith means that they doubt him until they see him. And in reality, if you got to touch him like that, then you ain't even got faith. It's still not faith because you're not believing in the unseen because you're right there and you see him. So a lot of us are dealing with doubting Thomas faith. The spirit of doubting Thomas is running rampage in our culture, in our community. And because they're doubting, it makes it easy for someone else to give other options. Oh, you can do this. You can get crystals. You can get salts. You can worship uh, images. You can worship spirits. You can worship energy. All that stuff must bow to Lord Jesus Christ. All of that stuff, it may be real to you, but at the end of the, de at the, end of the day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that God is our Savior. So what did Jesus do? about this doubting faith, this doubting Thomas spirit that has run rampage in the church. Verse 26 says, a week later, this is a week after that, the followers were in a house again, and Thomas was with them this time. Why wasn't he with them last time? I don't know. The doors were locked, but Jesus came in and he stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Excuse me, but what Jesus will do when you got a sin for yourself, he will come into that area that you lost your faith in. He will come into that closed door. I think it's the significance that the door was closed. I think it's there as a significance that it was locked. It says a week later he entered the, the, a locked door not just an open door, a locked door. That means that they were in a place that they didn't want anybody to come in. In reality, they were on the run because they said, you know what? We got Jesus, now we about to get his followers too. So Jesus came into an area that he was not supposed to be in. So what Jesus does when we lose our faith we may say, you know what, I believe him for this, but I don't believe him for that. He comes for that, that. He'll come right in. He'll come right into the middle of your relationship and say, you know what, no, you're better than this. He'll come right into your financial situation when you say, you know what, I'm spending money here and it should be there. Jesus will invade some spaces. He'll come to areas that you said, you know what, I just, I, I, I lost my child. So I no longer believe. He'll show up right there in that no longer belief. 
You may say, I'm struggling with raising my children. I'm struggling with some decisions that I'm making. I'm struggling with a lot of things. And that area of struggle, that area that you wanted to keep everybody out, the area that you said, you know what, I'll testify about this. I'll talk about that. But when you touch that area, that's where the book stops. That's where it'll do it. I got to go. Because we don't want to talk about those areas that are close and near to our heart. Because that's where we lost our faith. Because that's where we got hurt. We lost our faith when we got a divorce. So we'll believe God for everything but a new spouse. Jesus showed us the way. He entered shut doors. He also called us to the carpet. Verse 27 says, Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand here in my side. Stop doubting and believe. He called Thomas to the carpet. The significance of this is that he showed his true power because remember, Thomas made that comment in private. And he called him to the carpet about some things that he had done in private. And he said, remember, you said the only way you will believe if you put your finger through my hand. So here it is. Stick your finger through the hole in my hand. Now I can imagine Thomas, who was struggling with faith, who was struggling with believing, now had an epiphany. How does he know what I have said when he's not around? Many of us are in that situation that God has called us to the carpet about some areas in our life, some private conversations that were meant to hurt others. Some things that we said that we know we should not have said. But once we put it in the atmosphere, we couldn't get it back. And he said, you know what? You said it yourself. You said the only way you'll believe in me is that if you put your hands through the hole of finger through the hole of my hand. So you set the precedence. And now because you said the only way I'll believe is this, he showed up in the exact way that you called him out. So now you have no other choice but to believe because you said you believe if he paid my rent. You believe if he saved my son. You believe if he healed my family. You'll believe if he just let my mother survive this accident. You'll believe if you just give my father two more years. Let me have him for two more years. And then I'll believe you. Let him beat cancer. God, I'll believe you if you just do this. I lost my faith, and I'm not going to believe you again until you heal my body. Until you get me out of this situation. Our faith needs to be resurrected. And as a result of Jesus calling him to the carpet, a choice had to be made. Are we going to stand by the standard that we made. If you do this, as we try to bargain with Christ, I'll do this. Thomas in verse 28 said, Jesus, my Lord and my God. He made a decision to say, you know what? I've been acting crazy. I walked with this man all this time. And he told me he'd be back. He gave me the blueprint and I didn't believe him. 
And I needed this to happen so that I can believe him. And now that it has happened, I'm calling him my Lord. I'm calling him my God. Let God resurrect some things in your life. Fight for the faith. Fight for your faith. Fight for your family. Fight for your ministry. Fight for your relationship with your kids. Fight for the Christian faith. And it was powerful that he said those things, but what is most powerful is verse 29, which was our commission. Jesus said to him, you believe me because you see me. Great blessings belong to the people who believe without seeing me. While you're in that situation, while you're down, while you're homeless, while you're losing family member after family member, while drama keeps following you, while issues keep piling up and you cannot see Jesus, that's when your faith is built. It said that blessings, great blessings belong to the people who believe without seeing me without seeing me. Your greatest blessings are going to come as a result of you having faith when you don't see your way out. When you can't do it yourself. See, the, the, the benefit of Thomas, he actually, he was in the time of Jesus. So it was, a, in my opinion, a little bit easier to have faith. We're just 2,022 years later. For some of us, it's hard to believe because we're so far removed. And there's so many different articles and uh, kid this and this and that about why God ain't real. But I challenge you on this Resurrection Sunday to embrace whatever you're going through. Because if you are willing to suffer with Christ, then you'll reign with him as well. Let me repeat myself. If you're willing to believe him when you're down, you have the benefit and the rewards of him when you're up. Because this too shall pass. Your child's going to start acting right. Your family's going to get back together. Things will work out for your benefit. It will work out for your good. But I just need you to hold on. I need you to hold on just a little bit longer. I thought about quitting myself. I'm having a lot of issues in certain areas. And it seems as though no matter what I do, no matter what intervention I try, it does not seem to be working. I'll have a little bit of success here. And then it's like, boom, back to square root one. We got to start all over. And then I'll get up the faith. I'll get up the energy to fight again. And then something else will happen. So I'm not just preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to myself as well. As well. Hold on just a little bit longer. Fight for your faith. And now, I want to pray for those individuals who don't have a relationship with Christ if you know that you're a sinner, if you know that you've never given your life to Christ, and you know that on this Resurrection Sunday, you want to make the best decision that you've ever made, I want you to repeat this short prayer with me. God, I'm a sinner. I fell in short of your grace. God, I believe in the resurrection. God, I believe in the resurrection. God, I believe in the resurrection. God, I believe that the blood was shed for my sins. God, I ask you that you would come into my heart right now and take over. Amen. If that was your first time 
saying that prayer or any uh, prayer that may have been similar to that, I want to congratulate you. You just made a great decision. Everything's not going to be great from here on out, but you made a good decision. You took the first step into getting things right with God. I want you to find a Bible-based church. If this is not the church you choose to join, that's perfectly fine. Because remember, you are the church. The church is within us. But find a Bible-based church, a pastor that will encourage you, that will lift you up, that will pour into you so that you can grow in the faith. And as you grow, you sprinkle out on others and the faith grows. I am excited about the decision you made. I want you to comment, DM or something, let me know so that we can celebrate you. We want to send you something. And if you decide that this is the church for you, go to our website, www.bethram.com backslash join. Fill out that form. We'll send you something in the mail. It doesn't matter if you're in Alaska, Africa, Kansas, California, New York, Baltimore, Florida, or even right here in Georgia. You can be a member of this church. But right now, I want you to go celebrate. I want you to go enjoy your family. I want you to go and prepare yourself for a great week. Remember that this is a fight for our faith. And God, Son, Jesus Christ, He's still alive and He's alive in us. This is Pastor Coach McKissick of Be the Ram Global Fellowship, and I challenge you to win the 97% and be the Ram in someone's life. God loves you, and so do I. That's it, that's all, and goodbye. I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend But there is beauty in what I can't understand Jesus, it's you Jesus, it's you And I believe you're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God all the miracles I've seen, you're too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God, and you heal because you love. All the miracles we'll see, you're too good to not believe. Too good to not believe. Too good to not I can't resurrect a man with my own hands But just the mention of your name can raise the day So all the glory to the only one who can Jesus is you
believe it. My eyes have seen it. I've seen cancer disappear. I've seen metal plates dissolve. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restored. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. I've seen families reunited.
Jesus. 